Hey everybody, this is James with Gilbert Tone Audio, and today we're going to take a look at the D-Drum DDTI. The DDTI is a trigger to MIDI converter to take your drum triggers and control software, or you can control other drum modules if you need more inputs. It's been around for a while, but they've updated some components. They've added some parameters to make life a little bit easier. So let's just dive into it. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the front panel controls and see what parameters there are. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at some of the features of the DDTI. As you can see, there are very few buttons on this thing. It's as easy as possible. We have function, which switches between your different parameters. And then we have the value, which changes the value of each parameter. So let's check out each one. We have kit, which is where you save all your settings. So any changes you make to your triggers, it'll be saved to that kit. Then we have program change, which sends MIDI channel out to other MIDI devices to change along with it when you change kits. The trigger MIDI channel is to send a specific MIDI channel to control different devices and to not control different devices. We have trigger MIDI note, which is to assign the note to the specific trigger. Now, when we go to the trigger setup, we have a few parameters. We have gain, which is the sensitivity of the trigger. Now we have velocity curve. Velocity curve is the reaction of the trigger to the performance. Threshold is used to control things such as double triggering or false triggering. You can set this parameter to make sure that you don't get any false hits or anything like that. Next after threshold, we have X talk or cross talk. This is to help prevent other drums firing off that specific trigger. For example, if you have a tom that's really close to your snare trigger and every time you hit the tom, it's firing the snare trigger. So this is here to help prevent that. Next we have re-trigger, which is the amount of time between each hit to fire off the second hit. So let's say you're doing a fast drum roll, you probably want this number really low to fire off the next hit. And then we have trigger type. Trigger type is to set the type of trigger going into the module. We have different kinds of piezo pickups. We have switch pickups. You can even do hi-hat. You can do sustain pedal, all kinds of stuff. Now, anytime you mess with the value of any of these guys, if you want to save, all you got to do is go back to kit and it automatically saves. All right, now that we've looked at the front panel controls, let's get everything connected. I've got a USB cable coming from the back of this unit straight to my computer. It is class compliant, so it'll work with Apple, it'll work with Windows right out of the box, no drivers needed. It does come with a power supply if you are trying to control other things like drum modules and synths and stuff like that. Right here, I've got a D-drum snare with a mesh head on it. The snare bed is off, so no rattling. I've got a Vinnie Paul signature trigger right here, rest in peace. And I'm gonna use this standard quarter inch to XLR female to go to it. We're gonna go to channel two. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, I've got everything connected. I've got the trigger going to the module. I've got the module going to the computer. Let's look at the piece of software to show you how I set it up in Studio One to be seen and to fire off some samples. Let's check it out. Okay, now that we're here in Studio One, I'm gonna go to Configure External Devices. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Add. I'm gonna go ahead and pick New Keyboard and I'm gonna just name it. I'm gonna do D-Drum DDTI. Then at the very bottom, I'm going to receive from DDTI. It should show right up and then send to DDTI. So full connection. I'm also going to make it the default instrument input. So when I make a new instrument, it just pops right up as the default controller. Hit OK. I'm going to make a blank session. Just name it, rent something random. Then I'm going to drag and drop Easy Drummer into it, just some random instrument. I'm going to check my settings over here, make sure I'm in channel one on the MIDI note, and bam, right there, DDTI. So all I've got to do is uh, arm it, monitor it, and here we go. Okay, so I'm all plugged in, got my software going. Let's give this a shot. I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Since I'm in input two, I should be getting snare. Let's give it a shot. Pretty good, but it's a little weak. So let's see what we can do about this. The first thing I would recommend is to change the pickup type. So we're actually gonna go down until we get to pickup type, which is the last one. Right now you'll see it says PP1. PP1 is piezo pickup. There's actually five different ones. We're gonna try and do a different one. So let's try number two. Sounds pretty good. Let's try P3. It's good, but it's very quiet. It's P4. 
Same deal, it's a little quieter. I'm gonna guess P5 is probably for really, 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 really loud pickups. As you can tell, I'm not getting anything. So we're gonna go back to P2. I think that works the best. All right, now that we've got the right kind of pickup that's working for this scenario, let's mess around with some of the parameters. I'm gonna go to gain first and see if that messes with anything. So gain is the actual input gain going into the module. It's how much level is going into this guy. So let's see. Right now the gain is all the way up. Go down to 15, 10. So as you notice, it's getting quieter and quieter. So this is gonna be really helpful if you're having trouble, if you have a certain pickup selected and it's still not triggering enough, you can actually get more level out of it. So I'm actually gonna go all the way up. Let's check it out. Cool, now that we've got the gain set, let's go check out the other parameters. I think we're gonna to go to threshold. Threshold is the third parameter down. This is actually how much it's going to trigger depending on the level you set. Right now I'm at four, which is pretty low. So we're just gonna go up and down and check it out. Here's 10. Notice how it's having trouble triggering some of those quiet notes. I'm trying to do a drum roll and it's having trouble picking it up. It only triggers half the time. I bet if I go up on the threshold, it's probably not gonna trigger as much. Just check it out. 15. So it seems to be when I go up, I have to hit a lot harder for the trigger to be heard, which makes sense. It's setting the level where it's going to fire off a MIDI note. So I think I might wanna bring it down so I can hear some MIDI notes. Let's go back to four. Bring it down even more. Try five. Now that we've got the threshold set, I wanna check out the velocity curve, which is actually how hitting it is going to make the module react. We can make it hit hard every time or soft every time. Right now we have it on linear. I wanna hit it a little harder, so let's try some other settings. So this is log one. It's gonna hit a lot harder. Let's try a different one, log two. Log three. That's just heavy hits all the time. Log four. Same thing, it's just hitting hard every time. SP one. Lot quieter. SP two. SP three. SP four. This is CST, that means constant. It's just crazy loud all the time. Hey, you turn it off. Then we got EP4, EP3, EP2, EP1, and back to Lynn. I'm gonna put it on log one. I liked how it was hitting. That's pretty good right there. There are a couple other settings on here we can mess with. Let's say I wanted to change what this drum is doing. We can actually do that with the MIDI note. We can go to the trigger MIDI note number. Right now it's set to 38, which is by default snare. Let's go to a random number, see what else it fires. Rim shots. Now it's a floor tom. I'm just gonna go back to 38. And that's it. That's the DDTI from D-Drum. It's a great little piece of gear to have in your studio or live if you need to add some more inputs to your module. It's probably the easiest and cheapest way to set up triggers with a piece of software or another drum module. And I like it. It's a great piece of gear. It's definitely a good tool to have in your arsenal. Well, anyway, once again, I'm James with Gilbertone Audio. Thank you, D-Drum, for letting me demo this piece of gear out. And 
I'll see you next time.